We all know that feeling of shock and panic when something of value is stolen. In this con, the hustler uses that feeling to manipulate the mark into doing something they wouldn't ordinarily do. Alex, Jess and Paul arrive at the service entrance of a large London shopping arcade. They make their way to the cafe area on the second floor, a suitable hunting ground for our team. They split up to take up their positions for today's scam, the bag and pin snatch. Alex and Jess are pretending to be tourists whilst keeping an eye out for a suitable victim. They have chosen this woman, and it's her handbag that's the target. The bag is going to be snatched, but that's only half the plan. The stakes are much higher, as you will soon see. Alex and Jess wait for an opportunity to make their move, while Paul watches proceedings from the back of the cafe. This is their chance. The woman's friend leaves the table, and the mark is now alone and vulnerable. Okay, no problem. Yeah, I come too. Uh, but when when will I see you? No, um, when I come back. Work here, even though yeah, really no. I, hang on, we, we take one one photo. Okay, what? One second. Excuse me. Uh, can you take a photo? Yeah. One second. Alex and Jess distract the mark and maneuver her into turning her back on her handbag. Like this. <laughs> There's Paul. He's going in for the steal. I have to put it on here. No. One second. I think he's like this. Okay. Thank you. Instead of doing a runner, Paul takes a seat near the Mark's table. Alex and Jess have their photo, but the Mark turns back to realise her bag is gone. Out of sight of the Mark, Alex has to get somewhere fast. Okay, I've got to go to the van. The Mark is distressed. Okay. Paul talks to her, but she doesn't suspect that her handbag is less than two meters away in Paul's briefcase. This is the big hit. The team are going to try and fool the mark into giving them her card pin as well as her personal details. Excuse me, do you have anything valuable in it? Do you have like have bank my cards or anything? Card, my phone, my what bank are you with? I work for Barclays. You do? Yeah, let's look, let's cancel your bank cards. Have a seat. Don't worry, have a seat. Did you not see anyone come here? No, no. There was somebody walking through, you but hold on. See someone here? Hold on. Alex wants to sound like he's in a call centre and not in the cab of a van. So he plays in a sound effects CD of office noise. All right, look, that's the bank call centre there. Speak to them. Cancel your cards, OK? Hello? Sorry. Um, my, my bag has been stolen and I have, I have all my... everything in my bag. I'm very sorry to hear about that, but I can certainly assist you with this call. Yeah, please. Do you know your account number and sort code? Uh, I think it's... Uh, yeah, with the help of the sound effects, Alex has convinced the Mark that he is a bank call centre operator, and she dutifully gives him her bank details. OK. Now I need your full name and your postcode, please. It's Michelle. She still has no idea it was Paul who took her handbag, and is hiding it in his case on the next table. OK. Now, I've got the card details here. It doesn't look like anyone's tried to use it, so it's a good job you called us straight away. Now, the last thing I need from you in order to cancel your card is your four-digit PIN number. Now, I can't take this off you myself because we're not allowed to take PIN numbers, so I'm going to have to put you through to the automated service. OK? OK, thanks. Alex now plays back a message from Jess recorded earlier. After the tone, please enter your four-digit PIN number, followed by the hash key. Alex records the tones, which could easily be decoded later to reveal the pin. Your card has now been cancelled. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. The Mark right, is grateful to the Good Samaritan. All right. Yeah. All right. But Paul's walking away with her handbag. Worse still, she thinks her account is now safe, 
Whereas in reality, the real hustlers have done enough to completely empty her finances. It started as a distraction robbery. It developed into a card pin and identity theft. A potentially devastating combination for the victim. It's time to put her out of her misery and let her know how bad it could have been. I pretty much carry my whole life in my handbag anyway. My cards and oh man, everything. So the person on the phone, that's just a whole scam. Everything's a scam. Then they're just gonna get all my details then aren't they and just then they can do whatever they want. Oh, well, thank goodness it's only you this time. Oh no, sorry I'm so shaky. There's two very important elements that make this con work so well. First, when we get the mark to take a photo of myself and Jess, she's concentrating on us. She's not looking at her bag, and that gives Paul a perfect opportunity for a clean steal. Second, when she makes the phone call, everything is as it should be. There's office noises in the background, there's phones ringing, there is nothing to arouse her suspicion. And without thinking, in panic, she gives all her information straight to us. Always try and keep your wits about you. And if something doesn't seem right, then ask questions. But what you must always remember is that the only person that knows your PIN number is you. The bank don't know it and they shouldn't ask for it. So if they do, then you should be immediately suspicious. We meet um, people who've lost their handbags every day. Uh, and the effect on them is devastating. They lose their phones, they lose their address books, house keys, car keys, cash, cards. All these things have got to be replaced and they have to basically reorganise their life. 